Hello everybody, how are you? I hope, oh, it's a bit, a bit high. <laughs> I hope you've all had a good weekend. <laughs> Talk about being prepared. I mean, actually, I have been in this room for the last half an hour. You'd think I would know where I was going to be sitting and how close I was. <laughs> Obviously not. Oh well, I'm glad that, uh, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you joined me this evening. I'll just get you up on my screen. I have got you there, but I couldn't see. Uh, isn't Facebook odd sometimes? Do you not think? It really is odd. Sometimes it behaves, sometimes it doesn't. So, oh yes, it's behaving. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. That's better. Oh yes, I'm on the screen now. You see, it's all very well. I can see you there, but um, I have to see it on my laptop as well because I can see the comments better there and I can scroll up and down, which is great. Anyway, enough of that rubbish. How are you? Are you okay? Got a few questions for you tonight. Um, I hope you've had a good weekend, like I said. I hope you've downloaded the, the new Making It Monday project, which is Tallulah. Oh, I, I love the name, never mind anything else. Um, it's a great little project, and it, although it is just a little purse, and you might think, oh, you know, dead boring. <laughs> you can think that if you want. Um, it's actually quite a challenging make because you've got to cut 40 of the little tiny squares. I'm not going to give the dimensions because I'd like to think you'd buy the pattern. Um, but you have to cut 40 and that's that's a lot of cutting, accurate cutting, and it's a lot of accurate stitching as well. So although it's just a little make, so I've got an itch, <laughs> it's always the way. It's, although it's a little make, it's something that you've got to have a little bit of concentration on. You can't, it, well, let's put it this way. If you rush it, it'll show because you won't get it lined up. If you look at mine really closely and if you look at the picture, I mean, it's not 100% by any means. Um, and the top stitching is as best as I can do. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I, I don't mind that. I don't judge anybody by their by what they can do. The main thing about a Making It Monday project is A, it's fun. B, it's, oh, it's affordable for a start and you get this video. And C, uh, it's, there's got to be a challenge, a little bit of a tiny little bit of a challenge in there somewhere. So some weeks we've really pushed you and other weeks we've said, oh, let's just chill out and have five minutes. And, and Tallulah is a little bit of that, really, because it's going to challenge you with your cutting and your stitching. Um, and, and there's a lot of it, a lot of stitching. <laughs> but um, it's actually a great little fun project. And it's just a little purse that you can put your, your coins in. The, the one thing I thought about is um, every year I go trick or treating with my grandchildren. And um, sometimes we've been around just that wee bit later in the evening and, um, you know, the, the sweets and bits and bobs have run out, literally run out. And it's, I don't know quite how to say this without feeling that ungrateful, <laughs> but it, I, I feel so sorry for the children because, you know, they've spent time because they always dress up. You know, they don't know. I'm just thinking about Sebi last year. I'll tell you about that in a sec. They spend time dressing up. They get excited. They want it to be dark. So it's I don't know if it's usually about six o'clock when we go out, something like that. And um, the thought of them not having any sweeties, it's for a grandma is heartbreaking. So um, what I thought is that we, I could have, you could have a little Halloween purse. Listen, it could be any time of the year. Come on. But you could have a little Halloween purse and have some pennies in there. And if, if sweets do run out, then you can give them the Halloween purse. Make two or three of them because they're only made from scraps. Um, and then they will feel really special, won't they? So that's my reasoning behind it. I can't bear it. I can't bear it if children are disappointed. And of course, you know, if you are a grandma, you know that it's grandma's rules. <laughs> and uh, I, as much as my two girls might say, mum, they're not allowed to enter them. Well, if they're allergic to it, fair enough. But you can't say to a grandma they're not allowed, can you? So it's always grandma's rules. It always has been. <laughs> They've survived it so far, and Jaden is 16, so it's not such a bad thing. Um, so last year I went out with, um, I think it was um, Sebi, Adrienne and William and Lily. 
because I think I don't I can't remember if Abigail joined us or not because Abigail and Jaden were handing out sweets at their house because their house is hugely decorated and um, it's uh, so for them that that's the excitement for them um, uh, I think if we could have a, an admin on there to delete some of these posts that are coming through. I'm sorry if you're being spammed. It's just one of those things that we have to put up with. Just shows how popular we are. But if the admin team could get in there, that I would really appreciate that because I can see them on my screen. How ridiculous. Um, <laughs> block them. Um, anyway. <laughs> yes, so as a grandma, grandma rules. So that's what uh, Tallulah, with a, such a gorgeous name, is all about. Perhaps it's because I put Tallulah in the title. They think, oh, hello. <laughs> Wrong. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so don't, don't worry if you see any sp spam comments. Ignore them. Do not answer them. Do not give them any uh, credit at all. Um, I'm sure the ladies will be onto that like... Uh, quick sticks I know they will um, yes so we are going to make Tallulah so welcome to everybody from uh, YouTube and welcome to everybody from Facebook um, that can't be right it says here that I've got 726 viewers do you think it's because I put Tallulah in the title <laughs> has that got some sort of connotation to it that can't be right they'll soon go when they realize it's just stitching um, <laughs> what? Oh, 618. It's come down now. So once they realise it's sewing, okay, it's sewing. Um, <laughs> go and find your entertainment somewhere else. Um, yes, so we're going to do a little bit of stitching. I've already done a little bit. So if I go on the overhead, we, we'll be able to see. That's, that's really tickled me, that has. <laughs> yeah, so it de depends really what you put in the... Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's going down now, Cindy. Well, the, I have, um, I'm just going to turn, um, come out a little bit. Um, it's, I've got the face, I've got the YouTube um, numbers as well. So that's why I see more than you. Oh, goodness gracious. Right. <laughs> Abigail, don't get excited. I think it's because I put Tallulah in the title. <laughs> anyway, let's crack on. I think it's hilarious. Um, I love being popular. <laughs> anyway, I've done some of it. The reason why I've done some, some of it is because huge amounts of cutting, okay? When I said to you this is a challenge, it's a challenge on all counts, which I think is absolutely fantastic. There are um, ways around this, and I'm going to talk to you about that, and I've, I think I've kept a little sample, which is absolutely awful, but I will share it with you. I'm just going to have a look in my bin because that's the only bit I've got left. Anyway, so I've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows. We've just got an eighth row to put together. So I've got my little squares here. Now I've turned it that way. So you can see the um, that I've opened my seams. Now, um, lots of people, there's lots of people have different views about um, opening seams. Um, I have done it for a little while on certain things and this is one of those certain things because um, the, because the patchwork is so tiny if you try to do pressing to the dark side and all of that malarkey you'd end up with quite bulky bits in various places and we we have to top stitch this you know you can see here we're going to do all this top stitching quilting call it what you like um, so my preference is to open the seam. So you're distributing. Um, <laughs> Abigail says we'll be putting Tallulah in the title from now on. Yeah, <laughs> good idea, Abby. <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm clanking. I've got my new um, necklace on, which is a bit clanky. Um, yes, so if we look at the other side now, um, it's not bad, it's not bad. There's some points that don't meet and I don't mind showing you, crikey. Um, there's some that don't meet, but that's better than the first one I did, only because I was trying harder. <laughs> so, you know, it's nice to have them to meet, but it, please don't think it's essential because look, when you look at the finished one here, 
because of all the stitching and the and the wadding and everything it kind of disguises the fact that you may not have points that, je that don't meet up i mean there's one there that doesn't Do you know, i'm not going to point them out because why why would i want to but um it just disguises it that's why we do things like that that's why sometimes we do quilting um and it, it not necessarily disguises the work it just it just sometimes it perhaps helps us to like our projects more because we get a little bit disheartened if we haven't done it perfectly and there's no such thing as perfect i wish those wretched people would go um if like i say if you are being if you are seeing spam don't worry hopefully um hopefully the ladies will be on it um i wonder if they've messaged me about it no okay i'll keep my eye on my phone Anyway, so um, the idea is that I've done all of those rows. I'm going to do one more row and then we've got the fabric to cut for the inside. And I thought I'd go for a really gorgeous purple with the witch's hat. I think this came from Abigail. Um, and I'm using H640, which is, let me just get the rubbish off of it. Crikey, I don't know where that's been. Um, which is um, polyester, but it's got this lovely glue side to it. Um, and because of that it makes it really easy for me when i'm demonstrating because that glues straight away and i don't have to worry about spray spray is great oh thank you karen spray is great don't get me wrong but for me sometimes when i'm demonstrating the glue is good but it is polyester so you cannot iron it on um, this side you know because you put the glue down wouldn't you and you would iron it down you must 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 iron from the fabric side and it, it works very well um so it's up to you what you use you do not want anything thick okay you could even come down i mean you can see how thick that is but you could even come down even more than that okay um 80 20 is not too bad it is a teensy perhaps a teensy weensy bit thick um because we're going to sew some layers so you might want to bear that in mind anyway let's let's crack on with this because this is um this is crazy today um thank you so much for joining me i really appreciate it i'm seeing all your comments come through sue says it would be good in christmas fabrics yes 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 christmas fabrics sue because then you could put christmas um you know um, credit cards in there or money whatever you decide that sort of thing if you want to gift something it's really nice to use fabric as a as gift wrapping because obviously it's reusable isn't it um you could uh you use you know like spring colors any i nearly 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 got my batiks out my blue batiks um but i thought no i'll, I'll stick to because our theme is harvest halloween so i'll stick with the colors that we, we sort of started with so let me just whiz you over to the side camera i'm going to make sure this is set up um fairly nicely i'm going to get up and just zoom in a bit folks okay so i haven't gone anywhere I'm just zooming in. <laughs> Sorry if I wriggle a little bit. There we go. Just a wee bit better. Just a wee bit better. Because um, <clears throat> I want you to see as much as you can see. Let's get my pincushion out of the way. Um, let's put it over there. Right. So obviously the first thing you're going to do is stitch your squares together. Now obviously you can chain piece these. If you don't know what I'm talking about, chain piecing just means that you're going to stitch perhaps two, well you are going to stitch two together like that. So you've got two layers um, right sides together. Let me just try and get hold of that. Sorry. There we go. Um, and you're going to stitch down here, quarter inch seam allowance. Do be careful with your seam allowances. Um, and then you're going to do another two and if you had two more you'd you'd do another two but we've only got five in our row so you can chain piece all of these together so do all your twos and then you join your twos to your twos to get a four and then an add an odd one and some people keep them on the thread so in other words they don't snip between each pair they will keep them on the thread um so you know it's horses for courses isn't it it's whatever you're comfortable with um let's just move that in just slightly a little bit more in this in the center yeah so um 
like I said, I've only got one row to do, but the principle will always be the same. Um, like I say, use use something to judge your quarter inch seam allowance. Now, you can see I've got a scrappy old bit of tape here, because although I have, and this is not it, but I have got a quarter inch foot for this machine, um, it's rubbish. It is not a quarter inch. If I did everything using the side of that foot, it would it would be out. In fact, I know it's going it, to it's out because um, in the past it's it's all been wrong. Um, so I I use this bit of old tape. I mean, gosh, and I'm sure you all have your own ways of doing your quarter inch seam allowances. So um, start as close to the edge as you can. You don't need to back stitch, um, but follow that quarter inch line. You get so far. <laughs> <laughs> it's only little pieces so you, you you know it's not too bad and then you put the next two pieces together and you get, get them so what I do is I get the corners lined up there put my finger on it hold it down and then just make sure that all the layers are sitting nicely together and then just carry on that's a little bit shy of a quarter inch I must admit um, break your threads now what you can do is and this is what some people do no you don't have to do this if you're not feeling confident is you open up the first pair like that give it a finger press so just so it lies flat and then while it's still attached you can then add your what would be your fifth square um so you know I'm not going to say what's right or wrong I don't think there is is there it's just what's comfortable for you but some people don't like wasted thread you know when you get to the end and you have to keep breaking your thread I mean I'm lucky in as much that I've got a thread cutter so it does save a little bit of thread so then all you're going to do is join up the first or rather the second pair let's just finger press that out and I'm going to put the black dots next to the white because otherwise there's two white together, which I don't, that doesn't sit comfortably. <laughs> so, look, and you, that's the other thing is I would lay all the squares out first to make sure you're not repeating any together. Um, it just keeps everything neat. So in a flash, you've stitched your five little pieces together. So you, you need to have, um, what, well, what it says in the pattern, that's what you need to have. Um, yeah, Kim says she said she found the same with a quarter inch uh, foot. Jean um, is asking how big are the squares. My darling, go and buy the pattern from me, please. It's only a pound. If you're in the States, it's $1.14 because our exchange rate is pretty rubbish <laughs> at the moment. So what we need to do is iron that out. I'll keep you there. I'm going to use my um, little mat here as my iron. And I would definitely do this one stage at a time because this is where you start to get the accuracy. Please forgive me for my really grotty mat. It needs a wash. Yeah, you need to be accurate with this because the pieces are so small. Um, thank you, Jackie. So um, all you need to do is literally just open up those seams and press them open. I think that the trouble with YouTube, I mean, I love YouTube, don't get me wrong, I've got nearly 40,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is just incredible, really, um, is that um, a lot of people, um, especially um, people from overseas, do, do free patterns. And consequently, I think um, it's difficult to, to sort of keep up with that. I think because they offer free patterns they get thousands and thousands of views and that's how they earn their money so it's really you know that's that's how it works I'm afraid so with those lovely pressed open flat and it really does make a, a huge difference it's so beautifully neat isn't it we're going to then join it up to the all the other squares I've done we've just got to make sure we don't repeat anything now you can just about see let's bring it back so I when if I do that you can just about see I've got two ghosty fabrics together so let's flip it <laughs> I've got two pumpkin pieces together there so let's flip it again 
Let's have a look at it that way. And that way is perfect. Can you see? You can't even see where it is because they're, they're different squares going all the way along. So it's really, it's not important. It's just nice to have them evenly distributed. And that's why I perhaps suggested that you use five, six, perhaps even seven different pieces of fabric to, to get your squares from. Now, obviously with an open seam, you don't have that luxury of being able to nest because we're not pushing over the seams to any particular side. So it's not as easy to line up those seams. And I will actually use my stiletto to hold this all in place. Um, Deborah um, is asking about the iron. You'll find a little mini iron on my Amazon my Amazon shop and um, I, I suspect one of the ladies, one of my lovely, lovely, lovely um, ladies will put um, a link on there for my Amazon shop. <clears throat> All right. And if you're in the States, you'll have, I'm sure, your own version. Yeah. So what I do is I make sure that that I'm, I'll get my needle in. So get your needle in. So you're anchoring your fabric. And then what I do is find the center point on both sides. So I'm making sure that underneath, I mean, this is not, you know, I'm not going to say you're definitely going to get this lined up properly, but get the first one lined up and hold it. Now, if you haven't got a lovely sharp stiletto, then use a, a nice long quilting pin or even your, your quick unpick, okay? Because that's got a lovely sharp point on it and, and that'll help you keep your... Um, oh, thank you, Jackie. I've just had a message from Jackie. Um, that, that'll keep your fabrics in place. Anything with a sharp point. We're not going to stitch anywhere near it. It's just there to hold. So once you get to about there, you can see I'm not too... I'm near, but I'm not near my needle. Right, there's my needle there. I hold to about there. And once we've got to that bit, I then line up the second one. So you might think, oh gosh, that's really tedious. Well, yes, it is a little bit, but you will get the correct size piece for a start and your points hopefully will match. And a lot of the time, especially with small pieces of patchwork like this, they don't match because they are small pieces of patchwork and your seam allowance is a bit is a bit out, basically. So it's good to practice. It's a good thing to practice. So there's our last line of squares stitched. You can see what it looks like. And if we flip it back, we're probably not too bad, not too badly lined up. In fact, they're they're near enough perfect not too bad that for this first one is not a little bit out but i don't mind actually i really really don't mind um <laughs> so i'm going to press that open and then we'll move on to the next bit oh hi susan oh wendy says our internet is buffing oh it's just annoying isn't it when the internet plays up well when anything technology wise plays up so um, what I'll do is I'll put you on, on the overhead view and then we can have a look at it properly. Um, you can see it. Uh, let's just make sure I don't put my iron on my cutting mat. <clears throat> OK, so let's open up that seam. So it's really important that we keep that really, really nice and neat. I, can't, I keep saying that because that's what will help your accuracy so just make sure your seams are lying flat and what i do is i you can see i'm pulling that a little bit and i'm bringing my iron right up to the seam now that helps i haven't um bedded the stitches in but it does help open up the seam sometimes so all you got to do then is get your iron in there wriggle it around and it should follow its way all the way along and it'll give you the perfect the perfect flat seam look at that it's beautiful i do like a bit of a flat seam and then you can always go over all the others <laughs> like we're doing now it's just habit isn't it i think flip it over give it another little press now the next stage is to put the the wadding on now i've got a scrappy old piece of wadding that i'm going to use and now i'm going to cut it down um, so everything is in the pattern, darling. Everything is in the pattern. 
So um, now we're just going to glue our iron our wadding down. So I haven't cut it to size, but I'll often do it this way. But what you must do is, is get all your seams out. In other words, you haven't got any fold, folded bits because you do want it to be pretty much the correct size. Okay, I'll, I'll forgive you if it's out, <coughs> excuse me, if it's out by quarter inch or so. So using um, our self-adhesive, if you like, our non-wadding, I'm popping that down over the top and all I do is just place my iron down. Do not do it on the other side. You will cry because not only will it melt your um, stabiliser, wadding, batting, whatever you want to call it, um, but it'll, it'll obviously wreck your iron. Um, so I just literally, because that is glued in the, oh, well, I said that, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> so just hold it down for a bit, just get some of that to glue. Gosh, that's, that's not sticking. Let's just give it a bit of a bit of welly. I think it is now. You don't want to scorch your fabric. <laughs> and once it's glued a little bit, gosh, that's taken ages. You know, if you have an old piece of wadding like this, you know that it deteriorates. Uh, I don't think this is an old piece, but it's not. It's not um, being kind to me. So we just have to um, tell it who's boss. Once you've got it on pretty well, just get yourself a pair of scissors, <laughs> which obviously are nowhere near where I want them to be. And then just cut it to size. Obviously you could use your rotary cutter and ruler. Don't think that you, you're, you, know, you don't have to use them because you absolutely can. Um, and actually you can trim it up um, at the same time. Just all of these things are habit, aren't they? Um, like I say, a rotary cutter and ruler will give you a lovely straight edge. But I know perhaps some of you don't, don't have those sort of um, tools yet. Perhaps you haven't ventured that far into your sewing journey. Don't know. Anyway. There we are, you can see how lovely and neat it is now. So because we didn't go right up to the edge, you'll notice I didn't go over, um, I'm now going to try and catch it down on the sides and the corners because um, in a moment that will be quite important. So let's just get that iron down. I think it's behaving now. It could be my um, iron wasn't hot enough. Who knows? Who knows? Anyway, I think I think we're OK. The other thing to do is to sometimes it's better to leave the glue uh, to, to go cold and to put to one side. So all the glue, obviously, which is melted, um, it sets. OK, it sets. So the next thing we're going to do is to cut our lining. So this is obviously where we need our rotary cutter and ruler. Now, once again, I'm going to use my piece as a template because although I've given you the dimensions in the pattern, if your seam allowances are a little bit out, then it, this is a great way of making sure all your pieces fit. I suppose it's, it's a form of cheating, but you know, hey. <laughs> I'm okay with that as well. <laughs> so I'm going to use my lining, no, sorry, my outer. I'm going to stand up for this because I can't cut sitting down as my guide. So we'll, we'll do it that way so we can see the pretty. Using my lovely um, ruler and I'm just going to line it up and cut. And I'm going to cut the other side. You don't have to do it this way. You can turn it all around. And then we're going to just shuffle it around. So if you've got a rotating mat, please use it. They are amazing. Obviously, I've got one somewhere. <laughs> and just trim it to size. Fabulous. I love the purple. I think it's going to look amazing inside. So my sister commented on my post about half an hour ago and she said, oh, I love, love, love these colours. So I said, well, I'll tell you what, you can have the one I make. 
So I think she's going to have, well, she'll either have this one or she'll have, well, excuse me for my necklace banging everywhere. Okay, so now this is one of the patterns. Let's just um, get you to the front for a second. This is one of the patterns where you can read off the screen because there's no templates or anything to cut out. So if I have a quick look at my pattern, I just want to make sure... Um, Cancel, restart my computer. You must be joking. Um, <laughs> yeah, so the next thing we're going to do is turn over both edges of the lining and the outer. So some of these steps that we do sometimes are a little bit confusing. If you've used directional fabric on here and it's going in one particular direction, you really, really, really want to think about where you're doing the fold over and where you're doing the seam. So the seam would go at the bottom if your fabric is always go, all going that way and whichever way you, you do it it's going to flip and go upside down so you need to decide if you want the back of your purse upside down or right way around it's just one of those things if when you're using one piece of fabric it's just the way it is um but I, I would suggest just using random pieces like this because then it doesn't matter which is your top and which is your bottom um, so the first thing we're going to do is turn over the top edges, let's assume these are the top, <laughs> by a quarter inch and I'm going to use quilter's tape to hold it down. You don't have to, you can just press the seams down because um, that's what makes it really easy. So let's just uh, get this done. So once again I'm going to bring in my mat because I shall um, iron this as well. So. That's it. It's, um... Oh, that's a bit funny. I've got me adhesive on the wrong side here. Right, that's how weird. So the first thing we're going to do is just turn it over quarter inch. So we're just going to press that down. Be, be very aware how much your quarter inch is. You might you might be really generous with, with that. It's not as big as what you think it is. So just just be aware. I don't know quite why my tape is upside down. How bizarre. <laughs> and then we're going to use quilter's tape just to help us um, keep it in place, basically. It's just for keeping it in place. So you might want to just iron it. You don't have to use quilter's tape. It's not an essential of life. But then what you can do, fold it over and you don't have to think about it ever again, okay? If you want to, you could give it a press just to help it, but really it's not essential. The, the main one that you might struggle with now is this one, because obviously we've got the all the patchwork and we've got the wadding, but it will do the same. And so, but be careful because this is your polyester wadding. You do not want to burn it, you know, melt it. So just be careful with it, okay? So I'm taking my iron as close as I dare to the edge and just making a crease line because that'll all help when we go to stitch this right at near the very end. It's, I mean it hasn't liked it very much at all. I have got a line there, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can see that. So what we've got to do now is to turn that over and stick that down. It won't be as good as the first side. In actual fact, I'm going to put it right on the edge this time. It makes no difference which way round? This is the wrong way round, isn't it? How bizarre. Um, it doesn't matter whether it's a quarter inch in or whether it's on the edge like this. As long as we can glue it down and tell it who's boss. Okay, so we'll just put our quilters tape down. If you want to use just regular wet glue, then use, use that. It's fine. I'm going to use my stiletto now just to kind of make a channel there and fold that over so all my layers go over. You might not think it at first it's, it's doing any good, but it, it's, it really is. It's folding all my wadding. If nothing else, it's folding my wadding and then fold it again. And then what we can do is take it over to the front like that. Hopefully that's fairly straight and then we can we can really give it a good press from the front. Okay, and you could use your best press now. 
Yeah, I know. I know about the tape. I know it's actually an old um, piece, I, and I think I realise now why I had it put away somewhere. So I saw it this afternoon. I thought, oh, that's a nice little reel. I'll use that. And now I know why it was put away. Yeah. So just give it a fighting chance. So you've put pushed that over. It doesn't want to go very well. I think my iron is a bit low. I'm going to give it some best press. Just a little bit, don't have to saturate it. Because <clears throat> the best press obviously is like a starch and it'll hold that crease a bit better. There we are, it's much better, look, straight away. Straight away. <laughs> oh dear, I'm still laughing about earlier. Right. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm happy with that now. So both ends have their folded, let's call them the tops, okay? Because like I say, if you're using one piece of fabric, you know, because we're gonna fold it, that at some point, some part of it's gonna be upside down. We can't write that. Um, there is a way, but I'm not gonna go into it now. But um, because we're going over and under and round again, I would say don't use directional fabric, basically. So we're going to put right sides together. So we'll bring this down like that. And we'll get some pins. We're being good. And I'm going to have to make my pendant a little bit shorter, aren't I? Because we, we went to a, a lovely craft fair in Adrian's village yesterday. Really super it was. And there was a lovely there's some lovely little stalls there really lovely and there was a lady there who did stitching but she also did jewelry as well and i said to her about the length of it and she said oh it's quite long i said well it will look nice on a black sweater but of course it's knocking on my table so mm -hmm. you know <laughs> right so let's put this under the machine and we're going to stitch along the edge that we've just pinned, okay? So let's bring the machine in. <laughs> there we go. That's not too bad. So there's the end with the folds, and this is the end with the pins, and we're going to stitch just down this end here. So I've got my little, still got my little foot on, which I adore. And I think Kath likes hers as well. So this time I'm going to do a little back stitch. <clears throat> Quarter inch if you can manage it, you know, do keep an eye on your seam allowances. Well, I'll tell you what I haven't done. I haven't done all the quilting, have I? I've just realised. Gosh, guys, I've missed that whole piece out. I tell you what, let's, let me, uh, let me finish, let me just undo that. <laughs> Gosh. Did anybody say? Did anybody say? Because I didn't, uh, obviously you know I don't look at the comments very much. I, I'm supposed to, but I don't. But, yeah, but well, yes, we need to top stitch this, guys. <laughs> so let's do that now, quick, before I get told off. In fact, I'll um, I'll have to undo that again, won't I? Gosh, how annoying. I'll keep it, I'll keep it down, I'll keep it down. So we're just gonna do the whole lot. Now look, this is where I go up the stitch length to at least three you could go bigger if you want if you've got a quarter inch foot even though it's not not a little bit accurate i would use it because you're just going to follow the seams down your piece and you're going to go up and down the lines and you're going to go side to side as well you're making a grid effect and if you use a foot to guide you it's um, going to be the same width regardless so best to use something consistent that's what i'm trying to say so let's uh let's get all that done gosh i got that bit completely and actually that's the bit that really makes a difference i thought we're a little bit of head of stuff <laughs> And if you can, start right at the edge. Because if you don't, and it doesn't get caught in your seam allowance, you'll see it. So let's try and quickly do that. It shouldn't take too long, it's fine. And it's quite nice because it gives you that sort of grid effect. 
and like I said before, it's great way. It's a great way of hiding your your perhaps your wriggly lines. If you're feeling a little less confident with your straight lines, with your squares, with your patchwork, it's it's a great way of, of disguising it. So we're nearly done one side. I've done uh, all sorts of trouble at the top here, but I'm sure I can get myself out of trouble there. So all the way down. And we'll do the other side and then we're, we're there, aren't we? Just got to do the cross bits. Yeah, so don't just do the straight lines because I can guarantee if you go wriggly, you'll see it more. So the more quilting you do, the better, because like I say, it hides a multitude. And what you could do, let me just show you now on this bit here, what you could do if you wanted to is come right up to the edge, if I flatten that down, you come right up to the edge, lift up your foot, come down a little way, and then come back up the other side. That's if you want to do it that way, okay? I do much prefer to do it individual lines like that. So let's go down that way. Now, if you do a stitch length of three, um, your machine will, will obviously stitch a lot, lot quicker. So I want you to consider the speed of your machine and maybe turning it down. So if you've got a, um, a tortoise and a hare, put it on halfway because your machine will run away with you because you've got a longer stitch. It's, it's quite good when you're demonstrating to have a longer stitch and you'll, you'll notice perhaps, um, you know, if you're watching people sewing on TV, some people will always stitch with a, a longer length because it, it's quick. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's, especially if it's decorative, smash him. All right, so let's get down the other side here. And do take your time. This, is, this could be something that is a really lovely little job for you to do. And that's what I said to you about, it's, a, it's, a, it's an easy purse. If you made this with just two pieces of fabric, by golly, you'll have it done in 10 minutes. But because you've got the patchwork to do and all this quilting, I'm so pleased I remembered, um, that's where you'll find your skills and your level. Um, and it's just nice to do, it's just nice to do. Alison says, fab pattern as always. Thank you, Alison. That is very, very kind. Pauline says, Tallulah, I wonder if we're allowed to say it now, Tallulah is looking cute. <laughs> I mean, it's, like I say, it's a very, very nice, simple pattern. And if you use one piece of fabric, like your lining piece, don't make it directional. Get a, get a use a batik or something that would look amazing um, don't have anything too thick so don't use a canvas don't use faux leather it's too small a piece okay so we've, we've stitched now hurrah <laughs> doesn't look too bad for a rush job oh dear me right so now we're going to stitch these pieces together so um we've got one one edge, let's see if I can show you, one edge here that's folded. And if I bring that down, we've got when it, when it, one edge here that's a raw edge, okay? And we're doing right sides together. So, excuse the stitching. Right sides together, and we're going to stitch a quarter inch along there. Okay, that's our next task. That's what we were doing before we was rudely interrupted with uh, my lack of memory which if anybody is my sort of age will absolutely sympathise with. <laughs> so quarter inch seam allowance all the way along. Do a little back stitch just to hold. And then what you're going to do is open it up. 
So in the pattern, I talked to you about that. Let me tell you what it says. Um, there we go, yeah. Flip both pieces so right sides are facing out. Press the seam, now fold wrong sides together and top stitch quarter inch. So let me show you that, what I mean, because sometimes we write it and it doesn't always make, it may, obviously it makes sense to us, but it might not make sense to you guys. So what we've done is we've stitched our two pieces together. I've opened it up. So in the pattern it says, flip over both pieces so right sides are facing out. And we're going to press, okay? So we're gonna give that a lovely press. I've got that on, the, on my mat, so it's made a lovely little mark. <laughs> I don't think you can see it though. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to top stitch along this edge here. So you're going to put right, sorry, wrong sides together like that. If you want to, pin it to hold it because this is going to eventually be the top of your purse, you know, your, your top of your pocket and we're going to top stitch. Now the reason why we top stitch is so it matches the grid. Because if you notice, let's look at this white one, we've got the grid here like that and then this empty space. So you've got a rectangle. So what we want to do is top stitch that so we end up with a square. If you look at the square here, that's what we want to end up all the way along. So let's do that. Let's bring you guys in and top stitch. Well, I hope you're all well. I hope you've all survived uh, the weekend. I hope you've downloaded the pattern. Um, I like to think that um, some of you are stitching along with me. Um, I know that um, our Lisa has already made one. And I know that perhaps Diana and Marge and, oh, who's the other lady that always stitches along? Um, that they will be have been really busy, perhaps prepping, getting a lot of their things ready, their squares, because obviously they, I think they realise as some um, seasoned stitchers that there was going to be a lot of stitching. Sorry, I'm faffing. Um, so it'd be nice if uh, if they had their stitched up. Okay, um, let's have a look. So there is our piece there and that's now been top stitched. So you can see how that looks. We've got a square now to match the squares in the other pattern. So it doesn't look odd. Well, I don't think it'll look odd anyway, but you know what I'm saying. So now the next bit again is a little bit perhaps complicated in as much that you've got a little bit of folding to do. So I'm just going to trim my, my threads a little bit because they're a little bit messy. And please go down, you know, your piece and trim all your ends off, especially where you've got an automatic cutter. Um, try to keep your stitches in the quarter inch seam allowance. But other than that, um, just just neaten it up. Try and get some of those loose ends um, snipped away. I think I think I'm happy with that. So now what you're going to do, if you look at the next stage of the, of the pattern, is that you're going to fold this. This is your top stitched edge. This is your folded edge, okay? You're going to bring your top stitched edge up to the bottom of the top row of two. So let me just switch that around a bit so you can see. So in the pattern, it says, ba -ba -ba, bring the sewn edge up to the bottom of the second row of squares. This is your folded edge. And this, just get that nicely creased, is coming up to the bottom edge of those squares. So just be aware of where your seam is. Line that up, okay? And if you want to, pop a pin in, but you only go through the top layer just to hold it. Let me just swizzle that around a little bit. Okay, so we've done that bit. But it also says that the lining needs to be out. So if we just lift that up and bring the lining out, that's what it looks like, okay? I haven't done any magic. You've got the folded edge here and you've got your what is actually your purse underneath there. So if I flip this over, that's what you'll see, okay? You'll see your grid work, you see the, the lining. 
So let's put that back. Okay, so you're only going up to the bottom of that second row. So I'm just, I'll pop my pin back in again. Okay, so the next stage is to take this bottom folded edge up to the top like that. So now you've got a double fold and in the pattern it says you have two folded bottoms. I'll show you in a sec. I'm just going to pin this so it doesn't wriggle and it all stays together nicely. So this is what I mean about there's a lot of layers going on so be very careful about what fabrics you choose. Use, use batik, use a nice cotton, poly cotton's fine. Don't use a canvas, don't use faux leather, don't use a denim even, because it might be too thick. If you use, actually if you use a denim, I wouldn't put any wadding on it, I'd just put a soft stabiliser on it. So, the pattern says you now have two folded bottoms. There's one folded bottom with your lining, and there's your second folded bottom with your patchwork. Okay. Now, if your patchwork isn't lying flat, get something like a knitting needle, sorry, <laughs> reaching over, get something and press that in there so it's flat, okay, because it may not l look nice when you when you first stitch this together. So now you've got your two folded bottoms, you've got your two folded tops as it happens, so we're just going to stitch down both sides. All we're going to do is stitch down both sides. We're not going to stitch there and we're not going to stitch there. Okay, I think that's, I think that's clear enough. I think that's all cleared that up. Because <laughs> I know sometimes it's difficult to read patterns. It's difficult to know and understand. Um, Hi Rose, how are you? I haven't seen you for ages. Nicholas says no denim for me this evening. Ooh. So you want to try and keep these folded edges together and if you've, if you've managed to keep that well stuck, well pressed, then they will stay together. And we're not unfolding those folds, we are stitching over our folds. So, little back stitch to hold because it wants to be nice and strong. And if that shifts, which it has a little bit, um, see how bad it is. If it's really bad, I'd say unpick it and start again. Another top tip is to start um, a little bit away. So, st where's my stiletto? So start stitching about here. Can you see where my stiletto is? And then go back. And oftentimes you'll have a better edge here because that's going to be the top of your, your purse. Flap, so it wants to be nice. So all the way down, do a nice little back stitch, cut your threads. So we're just gonna whistle that around. Keep it nice and flat, put more pins or clips in if you want, if, you, if that's easier. And we're going to just come straight up to the top. Do you see how that's puckering now? So I've got to be really careful that it doesn't really come out of shape now. Um, if you've got a walking foot, use it. I'm coming up to the top, should be okay, should be okay. And then a nice little back stitch just to finish off. So there's our two side seams done. So here and here. I haven't stitched there and I haven't stitched at the bottom. So what we're going to do now is to turn this through. Now this is where you may get confused and I'll tell you why. Because if you turn it through with your, uh, I think it's the lining way, let's, let's, let me think about what I'm doing because I want to do it wrong. Yes, if you do it the lining way and hold on to your inside pocket, can you see where that patchwork is there? You'll see that your patch, you can snip these corners by the way, your patchwork pocket will end up, oh, of course it's on the right side, well it would be, wouldn't it? Let me do it so it's on the wrong side because sometimes that happens. And I don't want you to get upset with yourself that you've done something wrong, okay? So sometimes it'll end up like that. Well, you and I both know that that is wrong because we don't want the lining on the front of the pocket. We want to see all that gorgeous patchwork. So all you have to do is flip that pocket back on itself. So get your fingers and thumbs in and just push that pocket out to the right-hand side, okay? And then use a lovely 
tool of some sort, not sharp scissors, guys, because we don't want to ruin what we've just done. Obviously, you're going to snip those corners and then it'll, you'll have better points than me. Perhaps I'll keep this one and give the nice one to my sister. If you've got any little threads, just get rid of them. Let's try and keep tidy. Um, <clears throat> there we go. Let's snip that one as well. I'll give it a little haircut as we're going around. Okay. So now you can see that our pocket is on the correct side. Yeah? It, <laughs> it's always one, isn't there? That's it. <laughs> Um, and then when we look at the back, oh, it's just gorgeous. It's just a really gorgeous piece of patchwork. And do embellish it, you know, put buttons on it and glitter and sequins and rickrack and pom-pom trim. You know, go fill your boots, make it special. So now what we're going to do is we're going to stitch right across here. So once again, you need it to be really nice. If you want to, you could use quilter's tape to hold all that in place, but do pin it, do clip it, whatever means it takes to keep all those lovely, lovely folds together. You've already done the work. Um, it already knows what it's got to do. It's just you have got to tell it who's boss all the time because we're using little pieces and little pieces have a mind of their own and you're in charge. So, <laughs> oh, that was a school mommy coming out in me. I'm, I'm, I'm not even a teacher. Um, so get those folded layers to sit nicely. We're going to stitch on the front because that's what we're going to see. And then we all we've got to do is put our popper in and then you just got to work out where you want that popper to be. You might want it on this top one here. So I would suggest you have a, a full square. <laughs> or, you know, you've got this fold here, so you might want to bring it all the way down to there. I think that's probably a little bit small. I think I've on this one I've gone. Yeah, I've gone with the top one, which is I think that's what I'm going to stick with. Um, but first of all, we need to stop, top stitch along here. So it, again, you know, simple make, but actually there's quite a bit of work to be done in the accuracy stakes. So it's, although I know a lot of you will put these together in a flash, um, I want the others, the ones that are not so confident to absolutely make one, take your time absolutely take your time if your machine struggles here because obviously we've got a few layers going on then guide it and do what we said before about starting about a quarter inch in and go back and then come forward you don't have to start on this outside edge here you can start in go back and come forward um, but just be confident you can glue it and then stitch it. You could use your quilter's tape, you know, whatever means it takes. Now look, when we come up to this next, this last corner here, get your sharp tool. So you, ideally it's a stiletto, but you could also use your quick unpick, your seam ripper. Make sure all your raw edges are sitting in. And I want you to put your tool in there and pull it so you've got a nice straight edge as soon as you get your needle close to it take it away we do not want to stitch over it it will break our needle so there we go so now we've stitched that top bit it doesn't look too bad at all obviously you're going to trim your ends and if, as long as you've got that uh, nicely positioned as we had before we took our time with the pinning and everything um, top stitch it and all of your inside should be fairly decent. That's not too bad at all. Um, Sally says, my mum always says, show it who's boss. 100% Sally, 100%. My mum would say the same. So we've got it. All we need to do now is to put our popper on. So Kim says, thank you, Lizzie. Made it up to the folding stage earlier. We'll complete now. Uh, Ravina says, very lovely. So that's that's very kind. Thank you. Um, I'll have a look at the, um, oh, Chris says, lovely pattern. I think I'll be making a few for Christmas presents. Well, absolutely, because obviously um, they are perfect for putting like little gift cards in and things like that. Okay, so obviously you're going to work out where you want your popper. 
Um, with mine, it's perhaps unfortunate I've got two whites together, but if we put an orange popper in there, that'll break it up. Or I could put, put a black popper in. So I could put a purple popper in, couldn't I? So, you know, think about where that's going to go. And what I want you to do is to mark it somehow. So I have got a tool that I use, but this time I'm just going to put my stiletto in there, make a hole there, do you see? Tiny little hole, and that will have made a hole there, which I can see you probably can't. Now you don't want to go through here, so I'm gonna lift my purse up, and I'm just gonna make that hole a little bit bigger. And on this side, I'm just gonna go in and just manipulate it a bit to make it bigger and if you've bought a kit then you'll have a bradle that will do that job for you so let's bring in poppers oh, it's like sweets so we've got a mauve that wouldn't do at all so i think we're going to stick with the the orange i do like the orange so um and I mean, you could go mad and do green, you could do bright pink. Now, I always take loads out. I've, I've always done it this way because we need an innie and an outie. So let's just make sure we've got the right ones. So we want two buttons with the, the prongs and we need um, an innie and an outie. OK, and there's quite a difference between the two. So don't get them confused. Very frustrating if you get it wrong. Um, now, when, when you use the tool, which is this, and it's pretty standard, it's nothing special, tons on the internet, I might have some on my Amazon shop. It's just a case of how much pressure that you can do with one or two hands. Sometimes I find it easier to stand up and put more pressure on. Sometimes I feel it better, I do it better when it, I've got it down on my worktop and I'm pressing down like that. If you haven't got the strength in your hands, then ask a friend. <laughs> get, get your other half, whoever that might be, to help you. So I'm putting the button through from the front. It's quite tight because we only had a little bradle. I have got a proper one, but there we are. It's done the job. Can you see I've got a little tiny piece of orange sticking out there? There we go. And I've got the button on the front. And then we're going to have the, the outy bit. So we've got an innie and an outy. And it should sit there quite nicely. So if I bring that up, you can see which one I'm using. OK, sorry from the front view looks a bit odd. Um, let me show you the other one so you can see what it looks like. Again, I'm sorry from the front view, it looks a bit odd. So like, if you push it down, it'll stay there. We're now hands free. <laughs> And you want to put the button in the little silver dish. You want to make sure it's in there. I have to stand up, folks. And I want to really do it on my mat. So let's move that away. And I push down. Doesn't take a huge amount of effort, but it's practice makes perfect. And let me just show you. That's the sort of thing you're aiming for. A nice flat centre bit. And on the next bit, we go, the button is going inside, so find your hole, pop your button through, and you could use a black button now. So when you squidge the centre of this one, it's a little black squidge circle and not, and not orange. So, so again, you just can push that down and it will um, should sit there nicely. So put your button in the silver dish again. Again, I have to stand up, make sure it's in. You could give it a little wriggle. I push down on my desk and make sure I've squidged it. If you feel that you haven't squidged it enough, then you can go in again for a second, a second go. So there's nothing to say that you can't go in there again and give it another squidge. And there we have our popper placed on. Let's just try and get that put together. Let's see, I don't know if I've got that squidged down enough to be honest. Once it's in it's fine. Oh there it's in now. There we go. 
<laughs> I just feel I wish I hadn't got two white squares there. <laughs> Let's look at this one I made earlier. So you can see, depending on where you put your square will depend on um, how big you might end up with it, quarter inch difference. Um, also, that depends on seam allowances and all those sort of things. But it just makes a lovely, lovely little purse. And then, of course, depending on what lining you use, would depend. could be a surprise in there. It could be sort of um, a nice soft glitter fabric in there. Or it could be um, what I've got, just a batik. Just absolutely gorgeous. So... There we are, that's our project for this Monday, which is Tallulah. I'm not sure I want to say it. <laughs> and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Let's just have a quick look at the comments on here. Um, let's have a look. Um, Sheila on YouTube says, a brilliant little purse, Lizzie. Thank you. Uh, Ravina says, it's lovely. Thank you, Lizzie. Let's just have a look a little bit further back. Um, Sue says, it's a cute little purse. Um, oh, I've got, seen the one from Sally about her mum always says, show it who's the boss. That's right. Um, so lots and lots of comments on there. Lots and lots of people watching tonight as well. We were a little surprised, weren't we, right at the beginning? <laughs> I'll be interested to see if, uh, if Abigail uses Tallulah in anything now. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. How fun. Uh, I wonder if you could make a reversible. Well, I suppose you could in a way, Jill, because you remember when we first folded it through and I said to you, I want to do it wrong because then I'll show you how to make it right. You could actually get hold of those corners again. Um, obviously, your popper is going to be wrong, I think. Yeah, it's going to be on the, the inside, not the outside. Um, so perhaps you'd want to use a uh, maybe a, a couple of buttons, a buttonhole, that type of thing. So that's sort of now reversible but you'll see that the popper is wrong here so i would say button you have to two buttons and a buttonhole you'd be right then so in some respects it is anyway there we go nice little make just needs a press there we are tallulah <laughs> Feel a little bit of a devil saying that now. <laughs> funny right well thank you very much for watching it's been an absolute treat if you are a gold member i will see you on thursday kath is doing her fantastic pattern um, on thursday evening and i will be alongside with her we will be doing that together um, if you're not a gold member, then it will be a, we have got a little bit of a break coming up, just so you're aware. If you've seen this all the way through and you've stayed to the end, you'll find out now that next week we've got Kath doing her Making It Monday project. Now that's going to be, I've seen it, it's absolutely fabulous. It's going to be so useful. Again, we're using Halloween-y type colours, but you can use whatever colours you like. We like to keep with a theme. It's a great pattern next week, so don't miss that one. And uh, oh, look, the thing's gone right round. That's it. Anyway, if I pull it back a bit, that's it. Oh, that's a bit old now. Um, <laughs> and then the next Monday is actually Halloween. So, of course, I will be out trick or treating with the children. So, we're having a break now. Um, it's unusual for us to have a break and we don't very often but there's another reason why um, we're having a break on the 31st not only because it's Halloween and we're all trick-or-treating and being with our grandchildren children or hiding from all the children whichever it is um, uh, we are actually relaunching Gemma's Poppy for Poppy Day. Now, um, uh, perhaps, well, I know our American friends celebrate the Poppy Day as well, so I know that. Um, now, the pattern, all the proceeds from the pattern up after costs um, will go to the, the Royal British Legion, OK? So, in other words, it will not be free for anybody so it won't be free to the gold members it won't be free to the digital pass holders nobody will get this for free but what I can guarantee is that all the money spent and it's a pound after costs will go to the Royal British Legion and when I say costs it does, none of it comes to me it's the cost that it that it's charged me for processing your order and it's about 45 pence i know in the pound 
I'm in the wrong job. <laughs> so about 65 pence of every pound spent will go to the Royal British Legion. So I can't remember how much money we raised last year, but we used Gemma's Poppy. So I will be putting that available to you on the website on the 31st. So um, there won't be a regular MIM, but it will be the Poppy from last year. It is, um, I can tell you now, I think I've hidden it, but it, um, I can make it available sooner. But that's really when I'm going to launch it. And I, like I say, I'd like all of you to buy it. And uh, all that money will go to the Royal British Legion, which is just just amazing. And, and don't forget also, you need to buy the pattern for the Halloween Children in Need Bear. We are um, well over 5,300 now. And I, oh, if only I could get to 6,000 before Children in Need Day, I would love that. Um, I've, I've written to them, so they all they know that that's what we've been doing as, as a group of people. And I very, very much appreciate the, all, every single pattern that's been sold. So don't forget to pick up your Halloween bear uh, cushion. I've received Gemma's um, two new patterns today for because Gemma makes them up for me. She's a lovely girl and she's very clever and I thank you for, thank her very much. So we've got two bear patterns being launched. Uh, well, it'll probably be the first. It'll be Tuesday the first. So look out for them because there's going to be two and then we're done. So we need another project for next year, guys. <laughs> I've got to try and think of one. Anyway, it's been lovely to chat to you. I'm sorry I've taken you way over your time. What is it? Ten past eight. Uh, thank you for joining me from YouTube. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you ever so much for joining me from, from Facebook. It's a, it's, again, it's a real treat. And I will see you soon. Um, one thing before you go. Um, every Monday, about half past nine, we one of us, either Kath or me, will be doing a live broadcast on Lizzie TV, which is on the website. It will be nowhere else except the website. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go to the website, scroll all the way down to where it says Lizzie TV. And I did a little bit of a test broadcast this morning. It was a bit frightening because I had no makeup and haven't brushed my hair. Uh, but every Monday we will be doing that and it will be, we will be showing you the Making It Monday project for that week. So if you don't, uh, if you want a surprise, don't watch. If you don't like, if you don't like, want to wait then catch us around about half past nine on the website only not facebook not youtube and uh, we will show you a little sneaky peeky of the making it monday project um so just something new that we're trying anyway lovely that you could have joined me um if there's any questions i'll i'll go back and look at all the comments and see what you have to say um and i really appreciate your, your time this evening um it's been lovely Grace says, thank you, Lizzie. We'll make these for Christmas for tokens. Good idea. Um, uh, Mary says, thank you so much. I really enjoyed watching. You're welcome. Uh, oh, Natalie says, love it. What model is your Juki? It's the TL2200 QVP Mini. It's fabulous. I've got the UX8. I prefer this one. I must be honest with you about that. Um, this is a really, really super machine. So if you want a machine that just does straight stitch, I highly recommend it. Anyway, I don't work for Juki. I should. OK, thank you so much. It's been lovely um, seeing you. I'm going to leave you with my picture and I will see you very, very soon. Night night. <laughs>